Hello, I'm Maurice Brown, and I'm Professor of Clinical Pharmacology in the University of Cambridge. I used to be President of the British Hypertension Society, and my interest is in so-called secondary causes of hypertension. So secondary hypertension refers to those patients in whom a specific cause for the hypertension can be found. And it's a particularly attractive diagnosis to make when finding the cause means the patient can be cured from hypertension and not need to take lifelong therapy. As often in medicine, one can come up with long lists of causes and I prefer to concentrate on making the answer to whatever cause is memorable and, and therefore making it easier for doctors to think about them and diagnose them. So we have lots of organs in the body which do contribute to hypertension, but the ones where specific causes can be found are the kidneys and the adrenal glands. Most people have heard of the kidneys and think of the kidneys as performing the task of getting rid of waste products that the body doesn't need. But the kidney also makes a very important hormone called renin. And renin is vital in the control of blood pressure. So there are some patients in whom the level of the renin hormone is far too high. And this usually occurs when a kink or a narrowing has developed in the artery to one or both kidneys. And this is curable because it's fairly straightforward to insert a, a catheter, a tube with a balloon on it, which can be blown up and get rid of the narrowing in the artery or arteries. The clue to this as a diagnosis comes from measuring the renin hormone. And it's important, I think, that whatever the field of a doctor is, if he or she is involved with looking after high blood pressure in patients where this doesn't seem to be responding to conventional treatment, to measure the renin hormone, a simple test to do, and when it's high, to then refer the patient for specialist investigation. So that's the kidney. The other main place is the adrenal gland, and these are called adrenal because in Latin they sit next to the kidneys. The adrenal glands are a mixture of several different glands, and there are two main parts of the adrenal which secrete hormones that can cause high blood pressure. In the early part of my career, I was mainly interested in the inside of the adrenal, what we call the adrenal medulla, where the hormone adrenaline is made. In, in most of us, adrenaline is not essential. It's what we call a vestigial hormone whose functions have been taken over by specialist bits of the nervous system. But in maybe one in a hundred patients with high blood pressure, usually benign tumors arise in the adrenal, which result in excessive amounts of adrenaline being made, and this causes high blood pressure. There are many clues to the diagnosis, but this has to be confirmed by measuring the amount of adrenaline, or preferably its breakdown products, in blood or urine. And then again, specialist tests with scans lead to the diagnosis and cure of the patient by removing the offending gland. So that brings me to much the commonest secondary cause of hypertension, probably present in 10% at least of all patients, benign tumors in the outside zone of the adrenal gland, which secrete the hormone aldosterone. Aldosterone is the hormone which regulates the amount of salt in the circulation. And it turns out that in most human beings, we don't need much aldosterone because unfortunately we're eating too much salt. But in around 10% of patients, little benign tumors have developed, probably very early in life, which result in excessive amounts of aldosterone being secreted and blood pressure slowly rising over many years as a result of excess salt in the circulation. The clue to diagnosis here sometimes comes from finding a low, low level of potassium in the blood, but most often the clue comes simply from the patient not responding to conventional drugs and critically by measuring the renin hormone 
in these patients, the patients with the aldosterone secreting tumor, the level of renin is not high as in the patients with narrowing of the renal artery, the level of renin is low. And this is because the kidneys are exquisitely sensitive to the amount of salt in the circulation and they switch off renin when they recognize there is too much. And it is this low level of renin, often despite patients receiving many drugs that should have pushed the level of renin up, which is the clue to diagnosis. So I strongly encourage doctors, whether in primary care or secondary care, who are looking after patients that present any difficulty in, in management to measure the level of renin, and if this is low, then to refer for specialist investigation. The tumors in the adrenal gland which secrete aldosterone are often very small. We sometimes call them microadenomas if they're smaller than one centimeter in diameter. But there are now specialized scans, for instance in Cambridge, where these tiny tumors light up after injection of a very short acting radioactive tracer. And these tumors are currently removed by taking out the whole gland through keyhole surgery. But we think that in the next few years, it will become possible, maybe even routine, just to inject something into the, the benign tumor, what we call an adenoma, or use a bit of electric current as is used often in medicine for other problems and rid the adrenal gland of the benign tumor and then cure the patient's hypertension. So these are really exciting times when a sizable portion of patients with hypertension may have a curable disease, it just needs doctors to think about it. So if you're in primary care, you are the doctors who treat most hypertension, if you have a patient not responding to conventional treatment, just send a blood sample to your local laboratory for plasma renin. It needs to be collected into a usually pink EDTA tube and sent to the laboratory. If you're in secondary care, the same applies, but of course you can start thinking if the renin is low of imaging the adrenal by CT scan.